OK, so what I have, ladies and gentlemen, is we have 3 tangent of x plus, uh, plus 3 equals 0. Now, what we previously always did, Nico, was we always solved this on the interval of 0 and 2 pi, right? So we always wanted to contain our answer between 0 and 2 pi, which was very helpful because when evaluating for sine, cosine, or tangent, our interval between 0 and 2 pi was up on the unit circle, right? Well, we're gonna actually going to solve this problem not on the interval, and I'm going to show you how to solve it when you don't have the interval of 0 and 2 pi. So first of all, when solving a problem like this, the main important thing we want to make sure we do is isolate our tangent of x. So we're going to subtract 3. Then I have 3 tangent of x equals negative 3 divided by 3. And therefore, you can say tangent of x equals negative 1. Right? Does everybody follow so far? OK. So now I have tangent of x equals negative 1. Um, now remember, what this is saying is what angles of x, when I take the tangent of it, is equal to negative 1. Now remember, the tangent of an angle uh, when on the unit circle was dealing with the y coordinate over the x coordinate. Right? So we look at here, there's actually two, an there's two angles where tangent is going to be negative 1. That's this angle, negative square root of 2 over 2, common negative, or common square root of 2 over 2. And then this angle, which is square root of 2 over 2, common negative square root of 2 over 2. Right? Those are kind of two angles when tangent, when you have the y coordinate over the x coordinate, equals negative 1. Right? Now, when we said your answer had to be between 0 and 2 pi, we said, oh, between 0 and 2 pi, well, then these are your only two answers, right? So we said x then equals whatever this angle is, which is 3 pi over 4. I'm sorry, 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi over 4. And then we said our other answer is 4 pi, 5 pi, um, 6 pi, 7 pi over 4. So for your last homework, that's what we said, right? Had to either be 3 pi over 4 or 7 pi over 4. OK. Is everybody following me so far? Yes. All right? But ladies and gentlemen, for this problem, we're not going to deal with on the intervals of 0 and 2 pi. All right? And what that means is, it can, yes, your two angles are going to be between 0 and 2 pi, but I don't want you to restrict it. That means it can be this angle, or I can go above 2 pi. And I could say that angle, or above 2 pi again. And let me go and explain what I'm really talking about. Because we know when we look at the tangent function, if I was going to restrict the tangent function between 0 and 2 pi, Remember, tangent looks something like this, right? Right? Well, pi halves, and then it continues. And how often does it continue? Forever, right? In the positive and in our negative direction. Right? It just continues over and over and over again. So if I say I want to continue it between 0 and 2 pi, um, let's see here, there's pi and then 2 pi. You guys can see that um, you can see that between this value and this value, there's only so many diff there's only so many points, right? And that's restrict. That's why I said, oh, it's only at um, it equals negative 1 at like 3 pi or when, um, when, at, when does x equal negative 1? So let's take a look at the values when it equals negative 1. It equals it at 3 pi over 4 and at 7 pi over 4. So when tangent equals negative 1, you guys can see there's an angle, there's a point, and there's a point, right? In the value, in the range of 0 and 2 pi, when does tangent, what angles does tangent equal negative 1? Well, at negative 1, between 0 and 2 pi, it equals negative 1 at 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. Does everybody kind of see what I'm doing? Now, let's say I take off my restriction. I take off my constraint. How many times does tangent equal negative 1? Well, it equals it there. 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 It equals it infinite many times, right? There's always going to be a point at tangent of negative 1 in each one of these. Even if I continue in this direction, there's going to be a point there for negative 1. So 
when I say between 0 and 2 pi, we like to use the unit circle for our 1 or 2 or 4 answers, right? But when I don't say it has to be between 0 and 2 pi, we need to find a way that we can write for all of these answers, going in the infinite and in the negative infinite uh, direction. So how are we going to write that? Well, we said our two answers were 3 pi fourths and 7 pi fourths. That's within, within the constraint of 2 pi. I'm sorry, that's within the constraint of, um, yeah, 2 pi. But what I notice is, if I go from this answer, right, if I want to find the next value, what the next solution is, it's this angle, right? To go from this angle to this angle, what do I need to do? Add how much of an angle? Pi, right? So in reality, you can just say pi. Then to go from here to here, I need to add how much? Pi. Then to go from here to here, I add what? Pi. And then I can just keep on doing this forever, right? And I'm always going to get this angle and this angle. So we just say it's 3 pi, 3 pi divided by 4 plus pi n, where n is going to be how many times you're going to add or um, how many times you're going to go in the positive or in the negative direction. Now, here comes to the case. When I take my angle 3 pi over 4 and I add pi to it, did I just cover this answer? Yeah, so we don't need to write it. Because 3 pi to the fourth plus pi is 7 pi to the fourth. So I just wrote my answer right there. When n is 1, I get 7 pi to the fourth, right? But when n is 2, then you're going back to your answer, um, going back to a new coterminal angle. Yes? So if there's no constraint, you're going to do the exact same thing before, but it's either going to be pi n or 2 pi n. It kind of depends. Okay? Well, maybe we'll look at an example. We'll look at an example where there's 2 pi n. Well, I'll show you guys that. Okay? But if right there, you guys can just see that. All right? So that's kind of new part. Now, the really